I mean, I, I noticed that a lot of times people don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want. Ooh. So it's a lot easier to say, see that. And then on top of that, a lot of times... Hey, it's Lance McGowan here and Tanner Freegard. And today we're going to be talking about how to add value because we hear that concept a lot in the business realm, whether you're a small business owner or if you're in a corporation. Um, and what I've learned is adding value is all about seeking understanding and offering customized solutions when people are ready. Absolutely. And I know as an example for me, like when it comes to helping people with natural solutions, I have to really understand what their needs are and what their goals are for their health. Is it better quality of life? Is it disease prevention? Is it being able to, you know, not have to go to the doctor or emergency room as often? Like, is it saving money when it comes to medication costs or, or even their supplements? So for me, it's so important to understand where people are at, where they want to be, and then I'm the bridge that closes the gap between that, and then that's where the value is. Because it's not from a Google search or YouTube video, although those can help. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of like planks. But I, I, what I want to do is build a bridge, something that's sturdy, that True. gets them there. And then there's different types of bridges. Okay. You know, there's the ones that are going to test the times, you know, like the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that that's going to be around for mm -hmm. the next few years. And then you have your wooden bridges where, you know, they can eventually start wearing down and, you know, the sun beats on them enough and you don't really know 10, 15 years from now if they're still safe. Yeah. You know, so there's different types of bridges for everything that you're wanting to come across, which is what I talk about with, with people all the time, uh, regardless if they're doing anything with me or not. Mm -hmm. But it's because it, it is about building a bridge. It's about finding out exactly where they are mm -hmm. and what side they're actually trying to get on. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like if we were to uh, take a road trip, you know, and we're saying, hey, you know what, we're going to hop in a car, we got a full tank of gas. But we're going to go drive to New York right now. Mm -hmm. We're in Las Vegas. Yeah. You know, so how long do you think that that trip's going to be if we don't ever look at a map, mm -hmm. if we don't plan anything out, we don't look for how any of that stuff is going to put in. Like We don't even put it in our GPS. Yeah. We just hop in the car and start driving. What do you think our rate of success will be? Not that good if you don't know where you're going or if you don't course correct along the way. So, absolutely yeah absolutely so when you're putting together a strategy for somebody whether that's on the health side finance side to me that's exactly what I'm looking at and what I'm communicating to them and that's why communication so important yeah is are you understanding what it is that they're trying to do mm -hmm. or are you trying to get them to do something you want them to do mm. and I think that's yeah. where a lot of the uh, miscommunication comes because you have one thing that's set and you're like man this is what I want, this is my intention, and this is what you need. Yeah. But we didn't actually hear what it is that they're trying to do. Yeah, so I think adding value has to do with providing a solution yeah. that's customized, kind of like I was saying in the beginning, but it's based on understanding where they're at and what their needs are. True. And when you're able to do that, whether you're in the financial industry like you are, or the health industry like myself, or if you are, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, a working mom, or you, you know, you're in a corporate environment, or a work-from-home environment, or a field-based environment, the, the same principles apply. It's, it's supporting your people, or peers, or coworkers, or boss, and helping them to accomplish their goals, which hopefully is in line with your goals as well, of you know, earning income or being able to keep the home maintained and keep peace, uh, you know, maybe in the home environment or Absolutely. with your significant other. I mean, this applies to the rela relationship realm too. Anytime there's unmet needs in a relationship, uh, and I'm speaking romantic relationship, somebody eventually is going to either be open to, you know, other people coming in to help meet that need or they're going to seek out their needs to be met. True. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. And, and that's simply human nature. Like we're all naturally selfish, right? And it's just to what degree, how often, and how aware we are of that. Yes. But at the same time, it's important for us to communicate and have our needs met in healthy ways. And in the business realm, it's more through products and services. In the romantic realm, obviously, it's with a significant other relationship or spouse. And then, you know, otherwise, it's just referrals and all the things that we've talked about in other videos. Absolutely. I mean, it's so important to truly understand what you want too. you know, because often I'm, I'm sure you come across this, but I'll be sitting down with somebody and I'll be asking them, you know, what, what is your end goal? 
Mm -hmm. You know, what's that final destination that you would like to end up at? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's it's unknown. Mm -hmm. We've never really thought about it. We've uh, kind of pushed it off. Maybe we thought, man, I wasn't going to ever get there. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I'll, I'll take a few detours and see what it is um, that is important to me and, and, and kind of just piece together that. Yeah. Um, you come across that a lot too? Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed that a lot of times people don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want. Ooh. So it's a lot easier to say, see that. And then on top of that, a lot of times we don't know what we want until we're presented with something. True. And so it's, you know, it comes down to like the self-awareness piece and, and, and a lot of things like that. So, I mean, a lot of, sometimes people would be like, well, I don't want like consulting, coaching, a kit, you know, supplements or anything like that. But what they do want is maybe to feel more confident or feel more in control or something like that. But that's only after we start talking a little bit. And it's like, well, you can use these solutions as a bridge to get to that yeah. feeling or, or comfort level or security or safety or whatever feeling that you're, you're going after. Because um, I'm, I'm learning a lot more so now that we are as much as logical or as, you know, fact-based as we think we are men or women we're actually very emotional beings true we're, we're we're seeking a feeling at the end of something whether it's comfortability safety security confidence there's always a feeling that we're going after yeah um regardless if we're emotional mm -hmm. or not throughout that process so let me ask you that what is your process when you're when you're sitting down with somebody and they're uncertain about what it is that they actually want they know what they don't want mm -hmm. how do you help guide them or help them come to those conclusions of figuring out exactly what it is that they want though yeah it's just a series of questions just okay. seeking understanding right and it usually starts off with you know what health concerns do you have if somebody says I don't have any health concerns and I'll start asking other questions like you know how often do you go to the doctor how often do you go to the emergency room um, what do you spend for over-the-counter prescription medications try to focus more on the behavior because they may not acknowledge or feel comfortable with the actual health concerns mm -hmm. and, and be and feel vulnerable enough or self-aware enough to admit those things and so and then from there I, I start asking other questions about okay so what are your health goals what do you want to see you know, it's, and if they've listed their health concerns, and it's usually I don't want to have this anymore, or I don't have that anymore, and I don't want to have this, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's usually the starting point, and then we just have conversations that kind of take next steps from there. That's awesome. I mean, it, I, I see that in well, I, I see that that needs to happen more in the business realms, yeah. regardless of where you are. Is is truly doing that self -ana uh, analysis of what is it that I'm wanting, and am I asking myself the questions? Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times we're, we're great at asking other people those questions, but when was the last time we checked? Mm -hmm. Did we recap? This is something I'm doing right now. I'm recapping because I know where my end destination is. I know what I ultimately want, but then now I'm rehashing that out and saying, well, is that truly what I want now? Or was that just the dream I wanted when I was a kid? Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to still live up to those expectations. What do I want mm -hmm. currently? Did it change? Do I need to make an adjustment in my strategies and my plans to make sure that I'm, I'm going on that correct course? Because as we change as people, you know, the things that we desire change as well. Yeah. And it goes back to what we've talked about in other videos, like what's our why? True. And even why do we have our why? Like, is it because of parent, parental expectations, significant other, spouse expectations, children expectations? Yeah. Is it everyone else's expectations weighing heavy on us? Or is it something that we want for something that leverages our best self and something that will help hopefully other people um, but yeah I, I think to summarize the whole you know how do we add value question it's all about understanding where people are at that includes yourself mm -hmm. because if you have clients or if you're in a sales oriented role it's important to seek understanding understand people's needs first before offering a solution I think I see a lot of people hard sell way too soon before they've even got to know the other person yeah in a real and genuine way and then offer yeah those customized solutions that is really specific to that person to make them feel cared for and that they're being heard and understood yeah. I think so often people are ignored neglected or even criticized for what they're doing or even maybe want and so it's important for us to to not do that um, and really offer great solutions 
even if you're not in the business realm. Again, this applies to the yeah. romantic relationship realm, um, certainly the business, small business, entrepreneur, even corporate environment with employees, because you still have peers and bosses and, and you maybe even direct reports you still have to add value to. Um, and just other elements as well in your family life too. True. Coolness. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to leave a comment below with what you think adds more value. Um, is it seeking understanding or is it providing a solution if you maybe already know somebody um, and, and know what they're looking for? Are you more intuitive or do you need to kind of gather more information? Leave your comment below. Otherwise, hit the like button if you did and hit the subscribe button for future video updates and we'll see you in the next video.